the ultimate tribute to the best zombies character. Grab your very own Richtofen gravestone poster today via MrDalekJD.com, linked down below. So what's going on everyone, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and today you are watching one of the most important storyline videos for Black Ops 4 Zombies. I'm sure as you've been playing the maps, you've been wondering what this could be like if we were playing as the mobsters. What storylines have advanced since the original Mob of the Dead? Would we even see any advancements? And thanks to the amazing sci-fi messages that have been found around the map and deciphered, in this video we are going to be going over the entire Blood of the Dead storyline with the mobsters. A brand new story we've learned thanks to the messages they've left behind, thanks to them being stuck in purgatory forever. I created a video about a week or so ago which detailed some specific cipher messages found about Sal De Luca and his confession notes. And we have a ton of notes from every single mobster detailing loads of backstory that we didn't know before. This gives tons more depth to each of the characters and is really, really beautiful that even though we we can't play as them, we still learn a lot more about these absolute fan favourite characters. Now before we jump into things, let me know down below in the comment section what was your favourite mobster from Mob of the Dead, and if you do enjoy this video, please leave a like rating if you enjoyed, but more importantly, I'm going to leave links down below in the description to the various people I'm going to thank throughout this video for finding these and managing to obtain the ciphertext and transcribe them all. It's going to be a long video, but trust me, you are going to really enjoy the story content within here. Now we're going to be starting with a big cipher which is actually rips of paper scattered around the map which when put together give you a very very big message. Now this message is the first in a series of messages which create Billy Handsome's hit list. And this is a look back through his life at all the various people he's gone and murdered as part of his hit list. A big thank you goes to Lizards of Dolphin, Oxen8, and Coldstone the Gamer for these particular ones I'm about to read. Get comfy because this is really, really cool. And just for a bit of context before we dive in, this is Billy Handsome's hit list and he's writing it whilst he's dead. This is whilst he's in purgatory. He's writing this list out as a way for him to look at his memories and look upon his life as things he was happy with and people he's killed and the list of people that he still wishes that he could kill. He believes writing out this hit list will be a way for him to redeem his eternal soul and be brought back to life. So without any further ado, this is a long one, but let's jump straight into it. All right. Guess I got nothing better to do in this hole than to sit on my ass and scribble for Sal's holy rolling homework assignment. So strap yourselves in, cats and kittens, for a few of Billy's greatest hits. They say you always remember your first, but I was so drunk I didn't realize he was dead till later. Caught this guy Rudy cheating in a round of dice and cracked his melon with a whiskey bottle. Had a laugh, drank more, and woke up the next day to the cops at my mother's front door. Welcome to Juvie, Billy boy. Happy birthday. I'm a free man. Came home, found my mother strung out on something a new squeeze was given her, in addition to a few bruises. So I followed him to the bar that night and brought the knife my old man gave me. Piece of sh** broke off in his ribcage. No cops that time though. Mum saw the blood and kicked me out, so I wound up on the street, sleeping at a bus stop. Some old time I tried to get fresh, so pop, there went his head on a bench corner. First job with the old crew, I was a whistle boy posted up on the corner while the fellas raided the general store. Shop owner shops up and pulls out his iron, so I pounce on him and wrestle for it. Guns go off along the man's head, and that's how I got my very first special. Missed that gun. Nothing special. Knocked over a store and shot a cashier going for a shotgun. It was a piece of sh**, so I let him keep it. What a night. I got roped into a posse to go scare some sense into a few commie union boys, but they turned out to be packing heat. They whacked my whole crew by the time I got to cover, but I took it slow and steady. Shots, body so neat and pretty, people took to calling me handsome. How about that? Got paid big bucks for a solo hit, four wise guys at a barber shop, fish in a f***ing barrel. Some schmuck named Larry Sweets threatening to squawk, garroted in the park. That shut him up. Another dice game, even drunker. Could have sworn the guy was cheating, but never found the other pair of dice. Oops. And officers Malloy and O'Reardon? couple of flat foots too dumb to be on the take. They found the scotch, they had to go. Slumlord wouldn't sell his slum to Johnny. Torrio turned him into a flaming scarecrow in front of his building. Wouldn't you know it, the whole neighborhood fell in line. Bar fight and a pool cue, guess the guy had a soft head. Corner pocket. Ah, the day I met Sal. 
He was just an underboss back then, but we just clicked. I could tell. Had a meet at the docks. Somebody got spooked and out with the bullets. Sal and me, we hunkered down back to back, popping anyone with an attitude. And when the blood and guts settled, we had the money and the booze. That was the beginning of the DeLuca crime family and a beautiful friendship. Three of Tori's guys paid a visit to Sal's grand opening at the Cabana Room. One of them had to be a buddy of mine from the barbershop job, and I knew it was sweet on the devil's dandruff. Lower him about back for a taste, cut his throat and clip the other two as they come running out. Clean as could be, but not clean enough, evidently. First of the low rent hit is gunning for Sal. Caught this one's rigging Sal's cherry red chariot. Caught this one posing as a waiter, slipping a cyanide mickey into the cognac. This guy was creative for an idiot. Tried pushing a Shirofo out of a ninth floor window when Sal walked out on the street. I catch the guy, stuff him inside the Shirobe, and put three through the mahogany. Instant coffin. This one was a dame going for a stiletto in her updo. I've been with enough casino harpies to know they ain't all fur and fake diamonds, but Sal, he was disappointed. I didn't like seeing that. We had our laughs with amateur hour, but soon enough Torrio stepped it up. Four man hit squad packing Tommies, whacked two real good guys, one of which was Jerry, who got all squeaky and snorty when he was drunk, and I didn't like seeing him go down. So I went with the Molotovs, called off the fire brigade too, just to watch those four burn well done. Ish. Just ballparking it here. This was an honest to nut shootout. Okay coral type stuff. I burned through the Tommy, the Smithy, the Big Barker, all my favourite pieces squirting every pellet they had. Both sides had to lay low after that, and Sal gave me some much needed time off for good behaviour and amateur hour. The brothers of two stiffs from the shootout found me in a motel outside Shorewood. Duper Gage River was right there, so I sent him for a midnight swim. I'm relaxing in a old bar, minding my own business, when three lowlifes decide they don't like what I had on the radio. I thought about letting it go for a second. Honest. At least Sal calls me off vacation to trash some warehouse. I figure I like fire, why not burn it down? Still based, I do, and it's the wrong one, and a bunch of migrant workers go up in smoke. Sal was pissed, but he bought the land cheap after, so he got over it and I got more time off. Bar fight, bar fight, car wash, another bar fight, no, wait, no, yeah, bar fight. I came to standing upright in some general store in Manteno or some damn place, I smell like an Irish bachelor party. I got my smithy out of the holster and everybody's lying face down, so I figure I'm robbing the place. The local flatfoot show up and start spraying through the glass and wouldn't you know it, one clips me in the shoulder. I just start laughing. Never been shot before. Then cops were so shocked to hear me cackle that I would have had enough time to make a sandwich, eat it and then take him out. Woke up the next day with the devil clawing his way out of my skull. Sat in a police cruiser wrapped around a tree. There was a lot of blood on the hood, so I guess that made numbers. Who knows? I got back and Sal was done nickel and diamond, we're after the heavy hitters too. Kuteli the knife coming out of church with his grandma, Dirty Fazzy eating ice cream in Southside Park, smelled him from a mile away. Joey the MLP smoking a cigarette on the back deck of the Michigan Queen, rumour has it he had the locations of thousands of bodies memorised in that big melon of his and put most of them there himself. Guy like that makes me look like Saint Peter. Tony Dynamite, there was a real whack job there. Found him sat in an uptown apartment surrounded with enough boom boom to start a second world war. I just lit the match. Ricky the rope, old fashioned kind of guy. Liked stringing up my buddies in very public place. I'll give you one guess how I took him out. Wrong, I backed him over with a refrigerated truck. Twice. Sent us McDink the Irish bare knuckle champ. This guy you hoped he'd shoot you before he got out the knuckle dusters. I emptied about a barrel and a half into his chest just to make sure. Solomon. Seriously, his name was just Solomon. He used to like to beat information out of people, and when he was done, he'd chop him in half with an industrial press, just like King Solomon in the good book. Except, this man went through with it, through a lot of it. Still keeps me up at night, and I'm dead, far as I know. And the Scotsman and the Brit, don't ask me how these two got wrapped up in the outfit of a bunch of Italians, but they sure as hell made their presence known. Truth is, they found me and tore me up pretty good. Lost about 100 pints of blood before I rolled a grenade under their getaway car. The scariest thing about being in hell right now is thinking they might show up. I think there was about 2 or 5 of them but there was so much blood and guts flying around I can't remember all the f names. 
Plus, I'm getting bored and I've got to finish this thing. Or else my immortal soul can't get out of purgatory. Yada, yada, yada. The big ah, Valentine's Day. What a way to finally go out. One for the history books. That rat think lion skimming little f weasel. So yeah, that's the big list. Do I feel better? Lots of laughs and memories there, which I guess has all got in this Hellfire Duke joint. But I don't know about redeeming my eternal soul or whatever Sal is yakking about. But as for being a ghost, I definitely got unfinished business. I'd kill that Judge Chauncey for his high and mighty attitude. I'd kill my arresting officers for busting my chin and ripping my best suit. I'd kill that wise-ass Doc Tormoy for classifying me psychologically fit to stand trial. I'd kill my second grade teacher, Miss Carmichael, for saying I'd never amount to nothing. I'd definitely put a few bullets in Mr. Benedict, f***ing sadistic piece of shit, owner of the Whitewood Correctional Facility for Boys. People who hurt dogs, people who talk at the movies, people who talk about the weather, pretty much everybody who hates country music. I got more, but I'm bored, so f*** it. Great idea, Sal. You got all the great ideas. Now, I'm speechless. Like, Treyarch did say that Blood of the Dead had the most writing in it in any Zombies map that's come before it, and just the writing alone on that, I don't think I've done enough justice to the character's voice reading those, but you can just hear his voice whilst you're hearing those cipher messages. And it's incredible that that detailed his entire life. We hear stuff involving people he wished he could kill when he was a child at school. So we now know that he's always had this really violent side to him and how he became such a violent person is he teamed up with Sal DeLuca many, many years ago. And that bit on the end as well of people he would kill, stuff like people who hurt dogs and people who talk at the movies, that is just so hilarious. Fantastic writing there. But now we're going to switch gears a little bit and bring you a letter which Finn O'Leary has written. Now, this is very different to what you'd expect because this is actually an apology letter written to his wife Angelina. All that we learnt from Mob of the Dead is that before he was imprisoned in Alcatraz he was married to a silent film actress called Angelina Bow, and she betrayed him by testifying against him when he was convicted of 16 counts of gambling fraud. So despite his wife betraying him he still loved her and this is a new love letter he's written to her. So let's jump right into that letter. Dear Angelina, well baby you were right. You always said I could go to hell for all the shit I put you through, and sure enough, here I am, burning for what's probably forever. I know I said a lot of things when they came and took me away, putting it all on you, but I was always headed here, and as much as I miss you, baby, I'm glad you ain't here with me. Remember that night you were all doled up, dressed to the nines in that giant mink coat of yours, tiptoeing out of that gala premiere into the 12 below of Chicago January, legs naked as the day you were born? I never had trouble talking to dames, but with you, I almost choked. It wasn't until you doubled over into a snowdrift that I mustered the stones to run over, though I had it in the pocket when I fed you that line about the perfect icebreaker, but you fired back with an eat die look that almost knocked the wind out of me. Then you smiled that smile and finished the job. You told me I looked pale, offered to buy me a coffee, and we're off to the races. Wish I could have slowed down, taken more time, been a better man. I let you down, Angelina. I let that town crawl inside my head and make me think I was some kind of big shot hustler. You wanted to be an actress and instead I made you an accomplice, dragging you through the worst shit of Chicago with me. And when I didn't let you go, you found your own way out, just like the way you got up out of that snow. I don't know if you'll ever get this letter or if it's even real, but if you do, I want to let you know I agree to the divorce. You deserve better Angelina, some honest guy with an honest face and an honest living. Maybe have a couple good looking kids that take after their mother. Strong enough not to take any from this f***ed up world we live in, but smart enough not to take the easy way through. You don't have to tell them it's from me, but just tell them the easy way ain't f easy and maybe leave out the f***ing part, at least till they're older. As for your new squeeze, whoever he is, I got a message for him too. Take good care of our angel and make sure you listen to her real good. She won't steer you wrong. But if you even think about hurting her or laying hands on her in an unkind way, you better believe I'll bust out of this place and climb out of hell just to rip the skull off your neck. So Angelina, this is goodbye for real. I'm not sure if Sal is right and this letter makes a damn bit of difference, but I really hope some way, somehow, I finally did something right. Love you forever, baby. Finn. Damn, son. 
I'm sure quite a few of you will probably maybe say that Finn O'Leary is probably your least favourite character from Mob, but that was some really unexpected character development there, and wow. That really hits you in the feels, man. There's a lot of people to thank for solving those as they were all ADFG VX ciphers. Big thank you to WaterKH, Oxen8, Coldstone the Gamer, as well as Certain Personio with help on one of those ciphers. Now there is one more set of character confessions and this is from Sal DeLuca. Now I did cover these in a video last week, but since I covered that, there has been more confessions found relating to his, which finishes off very nicely. You might be thinking, where is our Arlington's confession notes? And that's because in this cycle, what's happened is he's permanently dead. And these three characters are the ones left in purgatory. And it's Salvador De Luca that feels the most guilty towards his death. Massive shout out goes to Rich Killer and Coldstone the Gamer for solving all of Salvador De Luca's confession notes here. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. I took the life of an innocent man. A profoundly stupid man, but yeah, an innocent one. Weasel Albert Arlington. I ain't sure what he was thinking when he sent us on that goose chase, but that didn't mean he had to die. We didn't have to kill him. I know now that you must have sent him to test me, O oh Lord, and I failed my last chance at redemption. I don't know if my confession will make a difference or if anyone will ever hear it, but it feels right to get it out there with the utmost humility. I pray you hear the contrition of myself and my associates and have mercy on our immortal souls. Amen, Salvador de Luca. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my second mortal confession. My first big score was a shipment of Irish whiskey jacked from a few goons at the North Slip. Nobody got killed thanks to you, but I shot one through the knee. Yeah, the guy was a crook, but he didn't deserve to limp around for the rest of his life. That didn't matter to me then. I saw what I wanted and did what I had to do to take it. Told myself it was fair, even natural, the strong surviving and all that malarkey. Now I know that wasn't the way. Oh lord, I wish I would have seen that then, but it only got worse from there. Salvador de Luca. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. I coveted another man's girl, his business, and eventually took his life. I destroyed him, O oh Lord, and celebrated doing it. Guy's name was Giuseppe Roni. Real big shot, bootlegger in the north side. Not a bigger shot than me. I put him on his knees and put two in his skull, and if that wasn't enough, I let that mook Jimmy Alessi take the heat for it. They killed him too, and the one after that, and the one after that. I started a war, O oh Lord, and I got rich off it. The killing didn't stop there. I ever just got real good at getting others to do it for me. Salvador de Luca. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. I saw the evil inside of Billy, and I stoked the fire till it was red hot. When I let him off the leash, the streets ran red with Torrio blood. Men, women, children, whoever it took and whoever had the bad luck to be around when we took him. In my head, I was a great man, the king I always wanted to be, doing what kings do to rule the world at the top. That's where I got stupid, O oh Lord. That's where I killed that poor girl over not a damn thing. That brought me here to your justice and that's where I belong, Salvador de Luca. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, my last confession was a lifetime ago. Sorry about that, Lord. And I ain't just saying that because I'm stuck in this place. I've done lots of bad things and squandered your gifts, O oh Lord. I'll start with my mother and father. They did the Ellis Island thing, came over with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Grandma, Bella, Silver Cup, and me growing in Mama's belly. All things considered, I grew up pretty good. Stick, ball, open hydrant baths, lots of pals, and at least a meal a day paid for by pops, shoe repairs, but me being a mook, that wasn't enough. I'd run around all day and night lifting this and that from corner stores, smoking, drinking, carrying on. I wanted to be king, not the kid of a couple poor, dumb wops taking beating after beating from the city that didn't want him. So I ran, Lord. I ran to the windy city and I didn't look back, forsaken my mother and father. That's a sin bad enough for an Italian, but for a Roman Catholic too? I guess I had all this coming. Salvador de Luca. And what's really interesting is that by looking at some of the contexts in which he's speaking, if they were in purgatory, they wouldn't remember their escape attempt. But he can remember that he murdered Al. The way he's referring to it means he remembers what he did. And if it was during the cycles, he would have had no remorse because he would still end up doing it I wouldn't realize that he'd done it before. But if it were after the cycle was broken, he would feel like he's stoned as the weasel was freed and got his revenge. 
This could mean that the good ending to Mob of the Dead is not just revenge for the weasel, but redemption and atonement for Sal, who believed he had truly done something monstrous and didn't deserve salvation. This means that they could all move on, or at least they could free their spirits to roam the island and eventually help Primus, which they do. Man, if the Shadow Man radios that we discovered a few days ago were not enough to the whole story, this just throws everything crazily because hearing all of this and then learning that the Shadow Man just purposely brought these four people who have committed very, very bad crimes to repent for the rest of their lives in purgatory, just the trap ripped off in, in here, is just crazy to me. The Shadow Man used these four poor guys and gave them a life of hell just to kill Edward Richtofen. It's incredible. And if you guys missed my video covering that a few days ago, you can find that linked on your screen now. But I'd love to know what you thought of this all down below in the comment section. The storyline of Mob of the Dead and these characters are some of my favorite parts of the entire zombie storyline because it's so intricate, so unique, and all of these throw such massive dynamic changes to the characters that we all knew and love that it throws a different perspective on them. And you have a lot more respect and some of them you might actually like a bit more now you've heard all of this context. If you've made it to the end of the video, then I applaud you. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like rating if you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button as well to keep yourself up to date with the latest and greatest zombies content. But thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.